We have now learned about arrays for the basic types. In this tutorial, we will discuss arrays of the reference types. Recall that you can declare an array or declare and initialize an array with basic types. When you create an array with a reference type, the basics are pretty much the same. Let's use the text type as an example. To make an array of subtype text, you will use array text, then the name of your text array and the size between square brackets. For reference types, the value contained in a variable is a reference to an object and not an object itself. If you do not initialize the variable, it will by default contain an uninitialized reference, which does not refer to any object. In the same way, a reference type array contains a list of references to objects, and by default, they will all be uninitialized. Therefore, the array variable myText will contain three uninitialized references. We can see this by trying to immediately use one of the array values to make a method call. Recall that to access the first object in the array, we use the array variable name followed by square brackets with the index inside the square brackets. The code compiles, but when you run it, you will see an error message. The error message notes that you have tried to access an uninitialized reference variable. In the case of basic type arrays, we could initialize all the values in the array using a list of values in curly brackets. You might wonder if you can do the same thing for reference type arrays by listing reference values. For example, in the non-array variable case, you can use a new expression to create an object and return a reference to it and initialize a variable with that. So you might try to do a similar thing to initialize the array. This approach is not currently supported in PCL because array initializer lists may only contain what are called literal values. A literal value is a specific value that can be represented in the program text, such as some string, 5.5, or true. In particular, you may not use a value which will not be generated until the program is run, such as new text. Although we didn't mention it, this is also true of basic type arrays. For example, we can't use a variable name in the initialization list for an int array either. So how do we put references to objects into the array we have created? We will discuss a few different approaches. The first is simply to assign values to each element. We use an index to specify a particular array element on the left side of the assignment and any appropriate expression on the right side, such as a text variable or a new expression. Now, when we run, we are not trying to access an uninitialized reference and we have no problem. In this example, the variable myText, the first array value and the third array value will all refer to the same text object. The second array value refers to another text object we created. We can do the same thing using a text object and variable created in SDL. A somewhat safer alternative is to start with an empty array and use the array add method to add elements. This ensures that you don't accidentally have uninitialized array elements.
The last method for creating an initialized reference array is probably the most common. We talked about SDL as a convenience for creating objects in the SDL objects tutorial. Recall that when we define an object in SDL with a name, presentation will create that object, set its initial state, create a PCL variable, and assign a reference to the object to that variable, all before the program is run. In this example, the PCL variable myText is created by SDL and refers to the described text object, so we can immediately use it in our PCL program. We can also put references to these objects into an array from SDL by listing the SDL definitions inside an array statement. To do this, type array, then an opening curly brace, then a list of SDL objects of the same type, a closing curly brace, an array name, and a semicolon. Just as for the non-array variable case, presentation will do several things for us before the program is run. First, the three text objects are created with the specified initial states. Then, a PCL text array variable named numbers is created. The array is filled with references to the objects in the order they are listed in the SDL array statement. Since the array variable is set up for us in SDL, we can immediately use it in the PCL program. Note that if you wanted the same object in the array multiple times or wanted to declare an object outside of the array for some reason, you can also name the object and use the type name followed by the object name. The results of this SDL section can be visualized like this. This makes clear that the values stored in the array variable are references to objects and not the objects themselves. We also learned in a previous lesson that arrays in PCL are value types. That means that each array variable contains its own list of values. This is true regardless of the type of array. In the case of reference type arrays, the array itself is a value type, while the objects in the array are reference types. Since reference type arrays involve aspects of both value types and reference types, let's do an example to demonstrate exactly what this means. Here we create a second text array and then use an array method named assign to copy all the values from the numbers array into the another array. After this assignment, the variable structure looks like this. Each array variable contains its own list of values. The values themselves, however, are references which point to the same objects. We can see this by using the first value in numbers to call the setCaption method, which changes the object. If we retrieve the caption using the first value in another, we see the new value. This is because the references numbers1 and another1 both refer to the same text object. On the other hand, suppose we do something which changes one of the arrays. For example, we can change the first element of numbers to refer to the second text object. However, this has no effect on the array another, so another one still refers to the first text object. This shows that each array variable contains its own independent list of values.
In an upcoming tutorial, we will talk about how we might use arrays in a scenario.